<laughs> you picked my video. I'm so flattered because there's a ton of videos out there and you chose mine and that's awesome. But like, why? <laughs> Said no YouTuber ever. I'm just curious because there's like tons of multilingual polyglot stuff out there and there's people that speak way more languages than me. I mean like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, blah, 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 blah. I only speak English, Chinese, and Japanese. Like, compared to that, that's not very much at all. But I guess I got you in here and what might keep you is uh, I studied Chinese and Japanese to a very high level. And uh, quite frankly, to get to a college level in Chinese and Japanese, especially with reading and writing, I feel like I could have learned to do a spoken self-introduction in about 10 other languages, just to be honest. So today we're going to start with Chinese, an introduction, Japanese, an introduction, and then English at the very end. And I'm going to give you some language learning advice that's really long overdue. So let's get started here. And do you mind if I make myself comfortable? Because, uh, yeah. I just, uh, I'm sitting here and, uh, I'm gonna read off of a script. Wait, did the other people read off of a script? Am I allowed to read off of a script? Heck, I'm doing it anyway. It's my channel. I don't really care how other people did their videos. I'm gonna do it my way. Okay. So, uh, let's start. 自我介绍. 首先这个频道是以上海最有名的塔命名如果用谷歌搜索一下上海就可以看到东方明珠塔和外滩景点池因为我在上海读书所以这个频道的名字跟上海有关这个频道是新的耶频道里面的每个视频都是用gopro hero 7 做的因为摄像头很小就可以放在口袋里如果看到什么有趣的东西就可以随手拿出来 2019年5月份,频道刚开始的时候,视频质量不是很好。嗯,上一支量有问题,视频太黑了,视频大小不适合YouTube的标准,有各种各样的问题。你可能在想,为什么这个频道突然走红了? I'm thinking that too, I'm trying to figure that one out myself. <笑> 去年我做了二十道视频这并不算多但是那个时候我在做研究没有时间做很多视频二零一九年七月份我去缅甸旅游然后碰到一些中国人跟他们开玩笑做恶作剧他们的反应很有意思因为他们是上海人然后我在上海
我很高兴，剩下的百分之五十五的人来自世界各国。我想给你们介绍一下亚洲的美丽。And a lot of people ask me why I speak English so slowly and clearly in some of these videos. That's because a lot of viewers are not native speakers. If you were curious, that's the reason why. All right, let's move on. 最后我想说的就是，你看看我的视频无法打量我，知道我的中文和日文水平怎么样？视频差不多都是很简单的日常对话。是为了好玩 i t s for fun <笑>。看看这些视频，看不出我对学术性的中文和日文的了解有多么深，也看不出我写论文的能力、阅读水平。比如，我已经看了大概五、大概一百五十本中文和日文书，还有用手写汉字的能力。That's really hard, actually. That's where the difficulty is. 中文和日文的难度才是在这里。其实看 YouTube 的任何一个短视频、日常对话呀、自我介绍呀，能看出来什么东西呢？太简单了。我这个自我介绍也是很简单的。This is a very simple self-introduction in Chinese. It's not nearly as intimidating as some of the presentations I had to do at Fudan University. But hey, let's move on. これから日本語の自己紹介です。Let's move on to the Japanese. Here we go. Sitting like that, like sitting like this, is killing my back, man. Ah, I gotta get through this. All right, let's go to this. Nihongo ban, jiko shoukai. 私はアメリカのミシガン州デトロイトで生まれて郊外で育ちました。家族はクライスラーという自動車メーカーで勤めていました。大学生の時、クライスラーでインターンシップをして車のことを好きになりました。今大学院でアジアの自動車産業を研究しています。海外に来て以来、あんまり YouTube を見ていません。他の YouTuber のことはあんまりわかりません。あんまり知りません。いつも動画より読書が好きです。小説を読むのが大好きです。読んだ本はほとんど英語から中国語または日本語に翻訳されていました。一番好きな小説は The Strange Case of Doctor Jekyll and Mr Hyde。英語、中国語、日本語で何度もこの本を読んだことがあります。For all those who were thinking of studying Japanese without kanji, well, you can, but you're going to be limited in what you can do with it. それは私にとって大きな挑戦でしたが。今は一般的に中国語と日本語の漢字で何ページか問題なく書くことができます。ハルピン、北京、上海に住んでいて日本にも2回住んだことはあります。中国で約6年間。This is a very Chinese gesture. 日本で2年間過ごしました。月曜日から金曜日の午前中に中国語学校に行き、夜に子供たちに英語を教えました。HSK 六級に合格した後、中国の語学学校で日本語を学び始めました。Yes, I studied Japanese at a Chinese school or a school in China. Kind of weird. 中国人と一緒に学んだので、日本語を話すとき少しだけ中国語のアクセントがあると思います。英語のアクセントじゃないです。毎日三カ国語を話す必要があるので、言語ごとに早く変えることができます。I keep doing that back and forth through this too. It's not something that I just picked up. It's、uh, just something that happened over a long period of time, and I did make an effort to learn how to do it. 言語を変えると私の手振りと身振りも変わります。無意識ですけど、I'm really not doing that on purpose. You may have noticed it in some of the videos. It's totally not on purpose. 日米関係と自動車貿易摩擦に関する70ページの論文を書いています。<笑> And here I'm making a video, and I'm supposed to be fixing my thesis. All right, thanks YouTube, <笑> or that's my fault. 卒業するのは2020年の6月になります。That's not true anymore because of the you know what problem I had to delay graduation. That really sucks. Okay, moving on. 中国のアメリカの自動車会社で働くか、日米関係の分野でアメリカ政府で働いてみたいと思っています。趣味は、This is the important part. Hobbies. 趣味はハイキング、読書、絵を描くこと、YouTube。
。バイオリンです。絵を描くのは一番好きなことです。高校生の時に芸術大学に入ることを考えていたので、私の YouTube のビデオに芸術的なものがたくさんあります。今、日本人の彼氏がいます。2019年8月に、ヘロトークという言語交換のアプリで出会いました。彼は上海近くにある町に住んでいる日本人のサラリーマンです。私たちは一緒に世界を旅するのが大好きです。スター・ウォーズとハリー・ポッターが大好きで、す<笑>べてのハリポッターの本を英語版、中国語版、日本語版で何度も読んだことがあります。Yeah, I'm a little bit of a nerd in some ways. Not quite an anime nerd, but I got my other nerdy things going on. しかし、中国語と日本語は私の趣味ではなくて仕事です。楽しく勉強していますが、それはただの楽しみではありません。ここからは外国語の勉強のアドバイスについてです。専門的なアドバイスであり、趣味として言語を勉強している方へのアドバイスではないです。I realize that not everybody is learning a language for like the career, but my advice is more for if you really want to like use it for your job or to get into school. So, oh gosh, let me adjust here again. Language learning tips, these are way overdue because I, I've been asked to do some advice videos for a long time, haven't gotten to it. Sorry about that, but we're gonna do it now. And I gotta find the right position here. How about this? Is this comfy? I, I don't know, I feel awkward. Hold up. I'm still reading off of a script. I'm sorry, I got so much I want to say. I don't want to forget anything. Usually, I don't even have a script for these videos. I just go for it. But today, there's so much on my mind. All right, first of all, you should know that I didn't know any foreign languages at all for most of my life. It's not like I grew up in the environment where I needed to use a bunch of foreign languages. I really didn't know anything for a long time. As an adult, I started self studying Chinese, and I hear a lot about self studying. I really cannot promote self studying. I really just can't.、Um, it's very good for the beginning when you first get into something, but if you really want to get deep into a language,、um, you're going to need some professional training. It just depends on what you're trying to use it for. And I started off with some YouTube videos, iTunes podcasts before moving to China in 2012, but that can only get you so far. And then I enrolled in a Chinese. Chinese language school in Harbin, and I studied with Russians and South Korean students. And I had a Chinese teacher for four hours every day, Monday through Friday, like it was intense. And we had a small classroom with only like、uh, a few students, and it was just a full immersion environment. There was no language other than Chinese being spoken in that classroom, even from day one. And then I studied at home every day for two hours after work. and、um, You know, that's, that's a lot. I don't think a lot of people have that kind of time. They have families, they have lives. I didn't. I became a hermit. I kind of had to remove myself from the foreign community in China and Japan to, to make my language level progress. I started living with Chinese roommates who knew zero English, and that's been wonderful. That's helped a lot. And I've lived with Chinese people for seven years. The very Best of all the roommates I had was a 65 year old Chinese grandma. She was awesome. I wish I was doing YouTube then. I, I could have had some great videos of her and I. Since sometimes I want to pull my hair out when I hear other people giving advice, I'm like, no, don't do that. Oh my gosh, don't study all these languages at the same time. I don't know. If it's your hobby, you just want to learn a self introduction in each language, then fine. But if you really want to use it, I just cannot advise you to learn so many languages at once as an adult. In Unless they're really similar to your native language or something's going on. But I'm qualified to give this advice because I've been a language teacher for eight years, although I taught English. I did tutor people in Chinese before. All right, so first of all, learning a language isn't usually free. <laughs> Sometimes you have to pay a lot of money. I'm not even gonna talk about how much I paid for my Chinese and Japanese lessons. We're just not even gonna go there. But it was a pretty good chunk of change.、Uh, the self studying is cool, but like I said, it only gets you so far. It's kind of like me, I play the violin poorly. Don't ask me for violin videos, it's gonna be embarrassing, unless you wanna laugh. <laughs> In that case, I'll make them, but it's kind of like when people tell me, Oh, I play the violin, and I say, Wow, cool, where'd you study? And they say, Oh, I learned off of YouTube. 
or I self-study the violin. I'm like, uh, well, it's cool. It makes people happy, and I, <laughs> I should be one to talk. I'm really, I don't have any violin skills really, and I studied with a teacher too. But um, and that's cool, and it, it'll be fun, and I. I mean, I enjoy it, but uh, just like me, I'm not going to be playing with any symphony orchestras anytime soon. It's going to be strictly a hobby, but it brings joy to a lot of people, and that's great. And if that's what you're trying to do, I totally get it. I totally understand that. Um, my Western colleagues in China and Japan, they just said they struggled a lot with learning the local language, and I told them all these apps and books are great. They didn't seem satisfied with that answer, but then I told them you should study about six hours every day. I told them you should study about six hours every day. You should study about six hours every day. <laughs> and many of them had jobs and families. Like, how do you do that? Not everyone has as much free time as me. That's a lot of free time. But I did that like six hours of study every day for about three years. All right. <laughs> well, that that's what it took to to get where I am today. But you know. Uh, really, time is your major factor. That's that's the biggest factor. But here are some suggestions I have. Unless you grew up in an environment where you were speaking multiple languages as a kid, don't be the jack of all trades and master of none. Because I see a lot of that. A lot of that. Uh, people speaking a bunch of languages and overstretching their boundaries, and then they end up not being able to speak any of them very well, or very few of them well. I only speak three languages, and I would really like to take on Korean, but quite frankly, I'm limited on what on my time. I don't have all the time in the world, and quite frankly, I think learning good Korean and learning business level Korean would require living in Korea for a while, so I'm really hesitant to take on that commitment. Number two. If you want to study to an academic or business level, I don't recommend that adults study two languages at the same time. Like, okay, it, sometimes it depends on the language you're studying. If it's Spanish to Portuguese, maybe you could do that pretty easily. But um, I recommend if you're trying to do that, uh, do what I did and get to a high level in one of the languages before you take on the second one. I waited to pass HSK6 before I took on Japanese and that was back in 2015. So I passed HSK6 and then I took on Japanese. But maybe HSK5 would be enough and you could start learning the next language. Number three. Language has four aspects. I just, I, I mean, each culture emphasizes different things. If you come to China, they'll emphasize reading and writing ability in English. If you go to America, they'll emphasize speaking ability in whatever language you're learning. But really, it's a four-factor equation here. It's about reading, speaking, uh, writing, and listening. And your goal should not be able to just write well and do the others poorly or just speak well and do the others poorly, they should ideally all be on about the same level and that's very hard to do. And I've only just now gotten most of my stuff on the same level. That took a long time. Beginners, and this is especially important for people in China that I was teaching English to and Japan. Don't start with books. Start with some audio lessons and survival phrases and learn those before you get into writing and. Uh, if you're a busy person, you can listen to them every day in your car on the way to work or on the train. And I, I listen to stuff like that, especially with JapanesePod101.com and ChineseClass101.com. And that's in the link below. I actually sponsor, I'm sponsored by them right now. And uh, I like to promote a product that I've actually used. And I did use their products for many, many years. Number five, last one, make language a part of your everyday life. You won't be able to study for long if you're doing it in a really boring, boring way. Like just open the book and write stuff down and try to make it a little more fun than that. Make some foreign friends or do language exchange like I did on Hello Talk. How many people looking at this right now are from Hello Talk? I'm just kind of curious. There might be quite a few. They found me on Hello Talk. I was obsessed with that app. I met like 200 people. People from Hello Talk in person, 200 Japanese people in Tokyo, in Shanghai, in Tokyo again, and like had coffee with them because I love people so much. I just want to have coffee with the whole world. That's my goal. 
And you can do some meetup groups. I did meetups in the Detroit area. Mix your hobbies with studying. I took violin lessons in Chinese. Like that's killing two birds with one stone for sure. All right, that's my channel intro, which was very long overdue. I hope you understand a little bit more about who I am, what I'm doing. All right, thanks so much. See you next time.